And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. On today's program, we're going to be making a classic dish, spaghetti with homemade meatballs. And then we're going to take an Italian loaf bread and we're going to put some garlic and chive, cream cheese and mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. And we're going to put that under the broiler. It's going to be delicious. The first thing we're going to do is get started on our sauce. I've got a pot of water on my stove that I'm bringing up to a boil. And we will be uh, adding the pasta to that in just a minute. But let's preheat our skillet to a medium high heat. We're going to chop one onion. We're going to make it into, you know, a, a, a fairly small dice. Uh, I like homemade pasta sauce. Now, I, you know, sometimes I will buy a jarred marinara sauce, but typically I, I, I like to make it myself. It's so easy, and you can add whatever flavorings that you like to yours, and it's, it's very, very simple. But you, by all means, make the, the meatballs homemade, but if you want to use a jarred spaghetti sauce, whatever's your favorite, you could do that. We're going to dice one onion into a medium dice. And we're going to saute that in our skillet that's preheating. We're going to add some oil to that. I love spaghetti. That's just one of those things that I think everybody likes in, in one way or the other. And I'm, I like a spaghetti sauce that's the bolognese sauce that has the meat in it, like a meat sauce. And Mike really prefers his spaghetti to be with a marinara sauce without the meat. So this way we both get what we like because I make the meatballs and I put on top of the spaghetti. And he gets his, the marinara. So we've got our pan preheating and we're going to add a little bit of olive oil, about probably two tablespoons or so of good extra virgin olive oil. And we're gonna add our onions to our pan. Pan needs to be a little hotter, but it'll, it'll come up to temperature quickly. My water has come to a boil. We're gonna chop four cloves of garlic. That sounds like a lot, and it is, but you know, good spaghetti sauce has a lot of garlic in it. So we're gonna chop four cloves. That one's not wanting to go on me, there we go. We're gonna mince that up, and we're gonna add that to our onions. And I just, you know, I guess if I had to pick a favorite cuisine, it would be Italian. I just love all kinds of Italian food. I love lasagna. I love the, um, the, the dessert, the tiramisu desserts. I love pasta dishes of all kinds. I love pasta florentine. I love the, um, uh, the, the chicken parmesan, the chicken breasts with a, a marinara sauce and the parmesan cheese or mozzarella cheese, whatever you want to use, melted on top of the bread. We'll make that one day. But we've got four cloves of garlic here. Remember to slice your garlic first, fairly thin. Then we're going to take our knife and we're going to mince our garlic up. I really do like to cook, and, I, I, and I, I like to make my own sauces. I make all kinds of just different types of spaghetti. This is just one of many types that I make. I make mine a little different. I add an ingredient that probably most of you don't add to yours. Maybe you do, but it, I, I love it, and it's fennel seed. If you've never tried fennel or anise, some people call it anise, but I call it fennel. It's yummy. It tastes a little bit like licorice. If you like licorice, you would just love it. And, and I do like licorice. I'm the one digging through the bottom of the jelly bean package looking for the black jelly beans. I love black licorice. But anyway, we want to mince our garlic kind of fine. You can make spaghetti sauce a thousand different ways. There's, there's marinara. There's Some people make it with sausage. Um, some people make it with ground beef. We're going to be making some meatballs here in just a few minutes that 
that are yummy. I just love meatballs. You can make it with sausage. You can make it just with vegetables and do a primavera over pasta. And we want to add our garlic. Oh, you know, anytime you add onions and garlic to a pot, it just simply makes the whole room smell so good. We're going to add just a pinch of salt. I'd say about, I don't know, a teaspoon or so of salt. We're going to add one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. I love the new fire roasted diced tomatoes that you can get in the store. We're going to add two cans, and these are the big 28 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes. You could use tomato sauce if you wanted to, but oops, my can went down in there. It's okay, we'll get it out of there. But I'm going to add two cans of crushed tomatoes to our sauce pot. It just smells so good with that onion and that garlic. And we're going to add some spices and some seasonings to it. It's yummy. I need to turn it down just a little bit. Let's add our next can of our crushed tomatoes. You can get really good canned tomato products now. Um, you could, by all means, if you have home canned tomatoes, which I do at home, I can in the summertime, you could add the home canned tomatoes, maybe pulse them and make them a little finer. That would be yummy. But we're just using the store-bought kind today. To that, we're going to add mm, rosemary. I love rosemary. We've got two tablespoons of rosemary. I've got two tablespoons, and I always put my dried spices in my hand, and I kind of give them a little bit of a crush as we put them in the pot, and that adds, uh, it just kind of releases the oils out. We've got a teaspoon, oops, we've got a Vesuvius here erupting, a teaspoon of dried thyme. By all means, if you have got fresh herbs, with the exception of the basil, Add your fresh herbs at this stage. The basil, you wouldn't, if you had fresh, you wouldn't want to add it until the very end because it would, you know, it loses its flavor. Now here is fennel. And I don't know if you've ever used fennel, but you could get it in the regular spice aisle. And it's a little tiny seed. And you need to kind of crush it just a little bit. So I've got a mortar and pestle. And you could use, at home, I have a coffee grinder that I use exclusively for spices. But if you have a mortar and pestle, you can do the same thing. Just kind of use, use your, kind of pound it down. What you're wanting to do by this process is release the volatile oils and the natural things that are in there. And you just kind of crush the seeds up just a little bit, and I'll show you. We went from the whole seed. My spaghetti sauce is simmering away here. We went from the whole seed, just kind of pound it just a little bit. And you can see it just kind of crushes it up just a little bit, as you can see. Just crushes up the fennel and just add that to your pot. It smells so good. I love fennel. And there is a homemade marinara sauce. Now that just kind of needs to simmer away. Let's add some fresh ground pepper. Then we'll cover that. We're going to let that simmer. And when I come back, we're going to start on our meatballs. I'll be back in just a minute. Hey, and welcome back. We've got our marinara sauce simmering away. Now we're going to start on our meatballs. I'm going to turn my skillet back on. I've got a skillet here that's going to be preheating. We're going to saute these a little bit, and then we're going to put them in the oven. I have a half of a pound of ground pork, and then I have a pound of ground chuck. I really do like to combine the two meats. I find if you use all ground pork, you don't have that depth of flavor that the ground beef adds. And if you use just the ground beef, the, the pork adds just an extra dimension of flavor and a little bit of moistness to the uh, meatballs. So we've got that in a big bowl. We're going to add one cup of the Italian seasoned breadcrumbs that you can buy anywhere. We're going to add about half of a teaspoon of salt. We're going to add some freshly ground pepper. I love fresh ground pepper. 
we are going to add a little bit of onion, just a little bit, just to add some moistness and some flavor. We're going to use probably half of this onion. We'll save the other half for something else. And we're going to mince it very, very fine. If you had a box grater, you could use a box grater and you could grate your onion and that would be absolutely perfect in your meatballs. You want to make sure that your onion is, is chopped fine because you don't want you don't want to bite into a bite of raw onion. So I'm mincing this with my knife very fine. As you can see, the, the pieces are just tiny because I'm not going to saute them before I make my meatballs. You really only want about two tablespoons or so of onion. So I, I think that that will be plenty. And then we'll go ahead and take our knife just to be on the safe side and run it back through the onion just to be to mince it very fine. Like I said, you could use a box grater and use the big holes on the side and it would be perfectly good just like that. We're going to add that to our meatball mixture. We're going to add about oh half a cup or so of Italian parsley. I need that one twist off there. And we're going to mince that. We're going to add some of that to our spaghetti sauce too here in just a minute. Just kind of mince up your flat leaf parsley. You could use the curly leaf if you can't find the flat leaf. You need to make sure a little, because I almost did it. When I went to the grocery store, when I was buying my groceries for this, I, I picked up a bunch and, and I, of what I thought was flat leaf parsley, and I smelled it. I just kept smelling, and I thought, wait a minute, that's not. You need to be careful because there are two things that look very similar. One is cilantro. And one is the flat leaf parsley. And I promise you, there's a huge difference in the flavor of the cilantro and the flat leaf parsley. So be careful when you're buying the parsley that you make sure that you are getting your flat leaf and not the cilantro. Cilantro is used a lot in Mexican cooking, Makes, uh, uh, usually in salsas and things like that. You know, you use a lot of that. We're going to add two tablespoons of milk. I'm using 2%, but you could use whole milk or whatever that you have. One clove of garlic. We're going to mince it fine, real fine. And we're going to add that. Again, if you've got one of the little graters, you, you know, by all means, for the meatballs, if you want to use your little box grater or your microplane, if you had a big clove of garlic, you could even use your microplane and grate your garlic up. But I can just use a knife. And if you mince it, if you just keep working your knife, you'll get it minced. It takes a little time. Just make sure you get it off the ends of your knife, on the sides of your knife, rather, and add it back in there. You don't want really big chunks of garlic. And you really, the sauce has got four cloves of garlic in it, so you just kind of want a hint in your meatballs. You don't want them to be real garlicky. And we're going to add our garlic. Then we've got one or two more ingredients. I've got some more fennel to tie in the flavors between the, let me grab my mortar and pestle. I'll put it back here. You want to make sure, again, that you kind of grind your fennel up. You're marrying the flavors between your sauce and your meatballs. Just kind of pound it. Like I said at home, I bought two coffee grinders and I use one for coffee beans if I have fresh coffee beans and the other one is just exclusively used for spices because I promise if you will get whole spices like whole cumin and grind it yourself or whole fennel and grind it yourself, the flavor difference is, is just tremendous because your, your whole uh, spices will be so much more flavorful. Then I've got half of a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to take my watch off here in that ring. Get your hands in there. These are the best tools that God has given us is our hands. You want to mix all that together lightly. You don't want hockey pucks for your meatballs. There's nothing worse than a tough meatball. So work it in. Don't squeeze the meat. Just kind of fold in your ingredients. 
until they're all incorporated. And oh, they just look so good, even in their raw stage. That cheese and parsley and all of that, and they smell good. I've got a skillet over here preheating, and I'm going to add some olive oil to my skillet. Let me wipe my hands off here. Add some olive oil. I've got a pot of water that we're going to be dropping some pasta in in just a minute. You want a good amount of olive oil in your pan because we're going to saute ours. I like my meatballs brown. They, you know, some people, they don't, they don't care if they, they start out brown or not. You want them to be about an inch, inch and a half. So get them, just kind of form them, and then put them down in your skillet. We're going to brown them on all sides, and then I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees, and we're going to put them in the oven for about, oh, I'd say 15 to 20 minutes until they're cooked through. And we're going to just have delicious spaghetti and meatballs, and it's just, oh, I love it. I love meatballs. I had a recipe once that I... Uh, I had, my just popped out on me there, that in, it used a little bit of chili powder in the meatballs, and those were absolutely delicious. So you could, you know, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of chili powder to your meatballs. You should get around a dozen or so good-sized meatballs. You could make them smaller if you wanted to. I really wouldn't go any bigger than this because then they, they tend to just not, the, you have to cook them so long that the outside gets hard before the inside is done. I gotta take a quick break. I'm just gonna keep rolling up these meatballs and when I come back, we're gonna do some wonderful bread. I'm gonna put these in the oven over the break. I'll be right back. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. You know, a flood begins with a single drop of rain and a habit begins with a single sin. We need to be careful and choose our habits wisely. Are you speaking what God would want you to speak? Are you going the places that God God would want you to go. Remember that God does see all things and a lifestyle of sin will begin with a single sin. We need to choose our habits carefully and know that God will help us. Hey and welcome back. We've got our sauce simmering away and over the break I did add about half of a cup of just more of the chopped fresh parsley that I had. We've got our meatballs in the oven. They browned and then we just put them in the oven to finish baking gently inside. I have a loaf of Italian bread and we're going to cut it in half. You can buy this in any grocery store out there. And we're going to cut it in half and we I bought just a container. Now you can make this with the borson cheese that you can buy, but that stuff is so expensive. And all it is, is, is a creamy soft cheese with garlic and onion and chives and things like that in it. You can get cream cheese. This particular one is the chive and onion cream cheese, and it really does the same thing. Just kind of leave it out on your counter and let it soften. You see how mine is just sort of soft? And what we're going to do is we're going to just put this on our bread. Oh, it just, you know, bread with cheese on it. Who doesn't love that? And just smooth out the cream cheese over the bread. You could do the same thing with a French bread. If you have a loaf of French bread, that would be perfectly fine. I just happened to, to get Italian bread yesterday, but you could do French bread. You could do the focaccia bread or ciabatta, whatever you like. You could do breadsticks. It, it really doesn't matter. You could use the same recipe on, on just about any kind of bread that you like. You could do it with just plain sliced white bread if you wanted. Would be good. We're just smoothing out this cream cheese on our bread. We've got a baking sheet that we have lined with parchment paper. 
You know, and a question somebody asked me one time was, can you, can you use wax paper instead of the parchment paper? No, <laughs> not for the oven, because what will happen is your wax paper will burn and it'll melt the wax and it won't be very good. Parchment paper is, you know, you need to get the parchment paper if you want to line your baking sheets. The only reason that I do is that it just makes cleanup easier. Put your bread on your on the baking sheet. We've got some pre-shredded Parmesan cheese. We're going to add that on top. It just looks good already, doesn't it? You just cannot add too much cheese. You add however much that you like. I like a lot of cheese. Then we're going to add even more cheese. <laughs> we're going to put just the pre-shredded mozzarella cheese that you can buy in any store out there. I just love the gooiness of the mozzarella. It just melts and it's stringy and it's just yummy. And you know something that I do like over a cheese bread? If you like it spicy, you could add some red pepper flakes at this point. I'm not going to do that, but you could. You could add some Italian seasoning to your on top. But what I like to do is just fresh black pepper and it just adds such a, a unique flavor to the bread and we're just going to put some fresh black pepper on our bread and we're going to put it in the oven along with our meatballs. Our oven is at 425 degrees. My little pepper mill's slow today. I don't know what its problem is but we're just going to add our bread to the oven. Our pasta water has come to a boil. The meatballs, let's take a glance here. Oh, they look so good. We're just going to let that go. We've got our water. Our pasta water has come up to a boil. You want to add your salt at this point. Always remember to add your salt before you add your pasta and I've got just a box of thin spaghetti. We're going to drop that in our pasta water, in our boiling water. Be very careful that you don't burn your hands. Take some tongs and just kind of work that down in there. And our sauce is simmering away. It's smelling so good. The bread will take about 10 minutes or so to heat through and melt and then we're going to have the most delicious spaghetti and meatballs and cheesy bread. So our meatballs have finished baking in the oven and all I did was take them out of the skillet and add them to our sauce. Our pasta is done. So let's get us a plate of pasta going. And oh, I just love spaghetti. We're just going to get a good serving here of noodles. Now I'm one that, you know, some people really like a lot of sauce on their spaghetti. I really don't. I like just a, a little bit of sauce with a couple of meatballs. So you just do whatever you like the best here. Let's get that out of my way. Oh, it just looks so good. First of all, let's get a spoonful of our homemade marinara sauce and a couple of these wonderful meatballs on top that just smell so good. Oh, doesn't that look good? Then we, of course, you got to have cheese. So we've got the pre-shredded Parmesan cheese, and we're going to add that all over the top of our spaghetti. And there's our spaghetti and meatballs. Now let's check our bread. Make sure our stove is all off and let's check our bread. Oh, it's done. Let's turn it off. And oh, look at this bread. How good it looks. Can you see that? It's just the cheese is all browned up and it's gooey and melted and it's going to be so hot so let me get some tongs so I don't burn my hands and let's do this let's get it off to the side get us 
one of the loaves up there. Let's cut a piece or two. Look at that gooey cheese off and add that to our spaghetti. And there you go, spaghetti and meatballs with garlic and chive cheese bread. See you next time. If you've enjoyed this episode of Everyday Manna and would like a copy of today's recipes, please send a self-addressed stamp envelope to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, Post Office Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212. Or visit our website at www.livingfaithtv.com. Please be sure to include the program number found at the bottom of the screen in your letter.